Nation and welcome. I'm Lady Savoy Colbert and I just wanted to tell you about some exciting news that we have at GTV. We have family and friends coming up on Saturday, September 17th at 4 p.m. It's our annual fellowship where we gather our family and our friends. We want you to come to 530 Reunion, DeSoto, Texas on September 17th at 4 p.m. Our guest pastor, our guest speaker will be Pastor Bertrand Bailey. And if you've not heard him before, you're in for a treat. If you have heard him before, you know what it is. We're asking our family, we're asking our friends, come on and fellowship with the GTV Church. We're looking to see you soon. give God the glory in this place because he is worthy of all the praise hallelujah hallelujah glory 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 if I find favor in your sight Lord please hear my I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. I cross the hottest desert. I'll travel near or far. 
Come on and put those hands together and give God praise, everybody. All right. I thought this was GTV. Look at somebody and say, that was my practice praise. Here go my real praise. Give praise to God, everybody. Let everything. Come on, let everything that have breath Come on and praise the Lord. Come on and lift him up. Come on, raise the praise. 
Come on, if the Lord woke you up. Come on, if the Lord done anything. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah! God, I feel you in here. The presence of the Lord is in this place. The Spirit of the Lord is here. And wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Come on, if you know you're free to praise Him. Come on, why don't you praise Him? I wish I had somebody from the old church to just shout Shundo. That means he's turning it around. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I feel a Shundo. God is getting ready to turn it around. Turn what around, pastor? Turn around my finances. Turn around my health. Turn around my family. He's getting ready. He's getting ready. He's getting ready to turn it around. Yeah. 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 I feel a turn around. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I feel a turn around. And it's getting ready to happen. Y'all don't want to have no church. I wish I had some believers that would just point at somebody and say, it's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. Come on, just point at three people and say, it's getting ready to happen. God, I feel God. I gotta pray, and I gotta let it out. I gotta pray and I gotta let it out cause you don't know what the Lord has done for me if you can but if you can't I understand
I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul, I got to make it personal. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. God bless you. God bless everyone that's in, everybody that's in the house today. Oh! Woo! Hallelujah. Praise God today. Praise God today. You ought to do me a favor. You just ought to point at somebody and say, won't he do it? I wish I had some won't he do it saints in here. That no God will do it. You ought to just holler out, won't he do it? Listen, don't fool me now, but is there anybody here that ever had their back up against the wall? You didn't know where, how it was going to come. You didn't know when it was going to come, but it came. Somebody else ain't want to do it. All right. All right. I got it. We got to go. We got to finish. We got to Hallelujah. Bless. Bless the name of Jesus. We thank God. Surely the Spirit of the Lord is here. Those of you that are watching online, we welcome you to the Greater True Vine Church located in the heart of DeSoto. Listen, we're just having a Holy Ghost time. We come to give God our best praise. Amen. So we thank God. Amen. Oh, yeah. Will you do me a favor? Just look down your road, tell your neighbor, you ain't seen nothing yet. T -t -t tell them God is not through. Blessing you. Amen. Listen, y'all. I'm trying to move on. Y'all won't let me. You got to be careful when you tell the Lord yes. When you give him a yes, Lord, you, you got to be prepared what's going ready to happen. Yes, Lord. I feel churchy. Yes, Lord. Oh, I feel churchy in here. Somebody ought to tell him yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. All right. Let's move. We got to move on quickly. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. Listen, I'm so excited because next, this coming Saturday, is our annual family and friends day. It is finally here, finally here. And we have none other than the Pastor Bertrand Bailey Jr. is gonna be our guest speaker. All the members, team members, I challenge you to do a banner job this year. And uh, we all know what we've been asked. And I know we're gonna go over. Not only are we gonna reach the goal, but we're going to go over. Amen. Somebody say over. Amen. Amen. And so, listen, we uh, invite all of our family and friends, okay? We're going to pack this place out Saturday at 4 p.m. All right, it's blessing time. Listen, very quickly, um, the giving is on the screen. There's many ways to give. Let's be a blessing to the house of God today. Will you do that? Amen. You can't be God-given no matter how hard you try. Oh, yeah, the more you give, that's what grandmama taught me. I'm from the old school. Grandmama taught me this. The more you give, the more he'll give to you. And so let's be a blessing today. Will you do that? All right. We, we've been having a time here at Greater True Vine, haven't we? How many of you have been enjoying these series? Our Sunday series, our Survivor series. But God just told me to get some messages to help you handle your hurt. To help you with your multi-layer of mess. And, uh, and so God has really been blessing. And then Wednesday night, oh my God. Are you working? Look at somebody say, are you working on something? Everybody in here ought to be working on something. And so uh, don't forget this Wednesday night. We'll continue that series. I'm working on something. All right, I'm going to revisit passage of scripture that I preached. Uh, I was going to preach something else, but I just couldn't get off this Survivor series. And uh, God dropped in my spirit and said, there's another Survivor. And I said, well, Lord, I, 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 I taught that before. He said, somebody need to hear it again. So John 4, 16 to 20, the message vibe version. That's my ghetto version. He said, go call your husband and then come back. I have no husband, she said. That's nicely put. I have no husband. You've had five, woman. And the one you with now that you're shacking with, not even yours. You spoke the truth there, sure enough. Oh, so you're a prophet, huh? Well, tell me this. Our ancestors worship God at this mountain, but you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship. Mm, you spoke the truth there. Sure enough, you're a prophet. I, I think y'all get the point. I don't have to read no more. Would you just uh, push seven people like you're going to push them down and say, pray for me. I'll be feeling some kind of way. To say, say for real though, I, I, I be feeling some kind of way. You may be seated. I be feeling some kind of way. I, I couldn't wait to get here this morning. Yes, I was itching to preach. But more than that, that I was itching to preach, I was itching to be a pastor. Now, that statement begs the question, because I know some of you might be asking, Pastor, isn't preaching pastoring? Well, that's not incorrect, but it is incomplete. You see, pastoring is not just preaching. A major part of my job description, Webb, is not just preaching but also sensing the pulse of the people. 
And over the past few months, doing what I do, hugging people and asking them, mother, how they're doing, person after person kept giving me this reoccurring response. Pastor, pray for me because I'm feeling some kind of way. And I said to myself, is it real to feel? Does God feel? Does he want me to feel? It is feeling biblical. Is it's feeling spiritual? I know it's psychological, but it's, is it also theological? I want to take this time to prove this holy hypothesis that I believe throughout the scripture, all the Bible and the Bible and even these past series of messages that we have heard all this past month of people feeling some kind of way. The question became, who would I use today as an example to prove that people in the Bible were feeling some type of way and you knew who jumped on my mind this sassy sister from Samaria yeah 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 and John the fourth chapter verse 4 the Bible says that he needed to go through Samaria I must need King James go through Samaria he needed to go Jesus needed to go through Samaria why because there's a sister at a well who needs a touch there's a wounded woman at the well who needs to learn how to worship there's a whole lot he needs to do but before I get to the theology let's look at the geography because the reality is why did Jesus need to go through Samaria I'm so glad y'all asked great class because he was headed back to Galilee to give you some quick context so you can respect the content, he's been doing his regular, he's been healing the sick, he's been opening up blinded eyes, he's been calling thug-like brothers, turning them into kingdom brothers, he's been doing what he do, and now he says to his dudes, you guys go with me, we got to get back to Galilee, so pastor, why did Jesus have to go through Samaria, y'all ready? Because it was the quickest way. I know y'all wanted to hear something better than, than that, but uh, that's just the reality of geography. But the theology is this. There is a wounded woman at a well that has a date with destiny and divinity and she don't even know it. There's a sister that Jesus got to touch. There's a sister who's feeling some kind of way, who has the idea that has no idea that this is her date with destiny and divinity. And so verse 7, y'all, says, then a woman of Samaria came to get some water and Jesus says to her give me something to drink now you have to understand that a rabbi would rather go thirsty than to talk to a Samaritan woman because the prejudice of the day really said that men did not deal with women publicly Jews did not deal with Samaritans and more than that you absolutely did not talk to strangers back then and then there is this law they had this law which suggested that women from Samaria that they were unclean so a Jewish man who is a rabbi would never say nothing to a woman a stranger a Samaritan woman of that now you understand now you understand why verse 9 Nine is so critical look at it everybody because the next verse says the woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans she said to Jesus you a Jew I'm a Samaritan you a man I'm a woman plus you don't know me like that uh-huh and you gonna ask me uh, for some water uh, man, are you willing to risk the degradation of of coming down to where I am and speak to me publicly are you willing to be a social outcast do you know what would happen to you a Jew if somebody saw you talking to a Samaritan woman I'm a woman you a man you a Jew I'm a Samaritan I'm a stranger you don't know me like that you look at me as dirty and you willing to drink from my cup I feel like preaching because if I can get a witness in here
here for your first child, you may not have a Bentley yet or a man yet or a house that you want yet, but why don't you praise him for how far that Jesus came down to get to you? Go ahead. Is there anybody here that has not dotted every I and crossed every T but push somebody and say God came down to come get me. Huh? Tell them I was down in degradation. I was down in depression. I have been this dog and needed to be delivered and he loved me enough to come down and is there anybody that would praise God not just for stuff but because he loved you enough to come down. So you asking me for some water. You, you, you asking me for some water. You, you willing to risk that to drink from my cup? Okay, let me give y'all y'all second shout because verse 10 is the part that you knew. Jesus looked at her and said, boo, if you only knew, I feel like preaching in here. If you only knew the gift of God and who was asking you for some water, girl. If you only knew who was asking you, do you have any idea who you who is standing in front of you? Do you have any idea who you standing in front of? Do you know that you're standing in front of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? That would just oh. Do do you know uh, that you just hit the spiritual lottery? Do you know, girl, I can wink my eye and fix everything that's wrong with you? And I came through Samaria not just to bust a shortcut, but to get to you where you needed to go. Uh, oh, is there anybody that if God came to you where you were, girl, if you only knew. Oh, you don't even know. Look at somebody say, if you only knew. Come on. Yeah, you don't even know me like that. You have no idea. Can I preach to somebody? Have you ever had a co-worker or a family member that you wanted to shake, that don't come to church, that don't believe in God, and you wanted to shake them and say, girl, if you only knew that he's better than anybody you've been sleeping with, if you only knew that he could give you peace, that surpasses all understanding if you only knew he's better than sex he's better than money he's better than a big house he's better than a big car you ought to slap five people and say if you only knew if you only knew oh I wish I had somebody and I was hoping that somebody would have brought a friend here today because they saw us on social media or came with their boyfriend or came with whoever if you only knew that the reason that greater true vine jump up and down the reason why we wave our hands the reason why this church is so loud because Jesus did something for us that nobody else can do and if you don't have it you can't understand it it's got to be on the inside it's a peace that surpasses all understanding Jesus said Watch this, Aisha, in the next verse. He said, I will give you a water, watch this, that you will never thirst again. And it will become bubbly fresh, spring within you. I got to go. Jesus said, girl, if you only knew who you was talking to, I, girl, I can give you some water that you'll never thirst again. Now, because he made this puzzling, perplexing vocabulary, it's above her. She can't catch it. Watch this. She, and so she, she hears what he was saying in the natural instead of the spiritual. And I know what scripture you're thinking, 1 Corinthians 2, 14, but the natural man cannot handle the things of the spirit of God because they are spiritually appraised. The NRSV put it this way, the unspiritual person cannot understand the things of God because the Holy Spirit is not in them, so therefore they are spiritually appraised. Have you ever been talking to somebody and it didn't take you long to say, you know what, you're not feeling me. 
Can I help somebody? Can I help somebody real quick? Stop trying to give gallon stuff to quart people. That'll hit you Tuesday. She can't understand, Sister Constance, that he's talking about another kind of water. So, so watch this. So, guess what she said? The next verse says, please give me some water like that. So, you telling me you got some water that if I drink this water one time, I won't have to come to this well and do what some man should probably be doing for me? Because truth be told, sister girl is tired. Uh, would be nice somebody else could come and get some water for me because I've been through a whole lot. You got some water that I wouldn't have to raise a little boy that a woman can't just raise like a man could help her raise because I ain't built to play football with him. I, I can't teach him how to shave you you got some water that can take some of this stuff off me you got some water that can help me with the pain of a girl who done dropped me you got some water that can help me she can't see it in the spirit she just sees it in the natural she says you got some water that can do that you know what let me just get what I came for please, please catch this y'all ready for this all human relationships and material things have their limitations. Now, that's better than what you just heard. Let me say that again. All human relationships and material things have their limitations. Okay, y'all not feeling me. Let me break it down. All I'm trying to tell y'all, that can't nobody do you like Jesus. <laughs> And I, I came to talk to every married couple in our church, those who have great marriages, decent marriages, and toxic marriage. If you ever make the person be God that you married to, baby, it's over. Because if one or both of you don't lean on Jesus, one or both of you going to get tired of the other one. If one or both of you don't lean on Jesus, one or both of you will expect from the other what the other one cannot give you. Your spouse, I don't care, your mama, your child was never designed to fill you up. As a matter of fact, if you're single, don't date no empty people. Y'all just miss that because they gonna want too much from you you got to have somebody that you ain't got to be their everything because Jesus is their everything and when you don't have Christ it's too hard to be your friend yeah, if you don't have Christ it's too hard to be your man it's too hard to be your wife because you don't know Jesus so because you don't know Jesus you, I don't know what you're up to because you're not connected to Jesus I don't know what's on your mind you'll never be happy you will always be complaining it's never enough because you don't get up in the morning and read your word you be getting up in the morning watch what I'm doing stop watching me get your own business we'll hook up in a minute go on and talk to Jesus get on your knees baby we'll hook up later I'm going to pray for you you pray let's pray together and when God fills us up can't no car give it to you can't no plane give it to you can't no sex give it to you can't no degree give it to you only Jesus and some of you are feeling some kind of way because you wanted somebody to be something they couldn't. I have people get mad at me. I have to tell them I ain't Jesus. I'm man of God. Don't don't get don't don't get the don't get them confused. I'm not God. Don't put the God in right here in front. No, I'm a man of God. And because you feel in some kind of way and they can't be what you don't want them, it's making you matter. It's making you feel some kind of way that you can't stop feeling. So Jesus said, you know what? I'm tired. Okay, girl. Okay. Uh, sassy sister from Samaria. 
Let's go ahead and get to it, because I ain't fit to play with you at this well. Where your husband at? Uh -huh. Go on and call your husband. The next verse says, go call your husband. She said, watch this. I ain't got no husband. You don't know me like that, man. He said, I know you don't have a husband. Boo, you had five. And the cat that you kicking with now, he's not your husband. Y'all just doing what he do. That's, that's not your husband. The one you with now, he said, it's not your. Can you imagine? Feel me right. Can you imagine how she felt as Jesus undressed her emotionally? You don't know me like that. Now she knows he's up to something. Yeah. He said, why are you being deep? Yeah. Why, why are you being sassy with me? Where your man at? Uh-huh. Yeah, go, go, go on, get your husband. Let's, sister, let's talk about, watch this, what's really wrong with you. Let, 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 let's, let's talk about why, why you really tripping. Let, let's get to the core of what, what has you going off on somebody who just asked you for some water. Let, let, let's just, just talk about it. Boo, where your husband? Let, let's dig into the depths of who you are. Let's go a little bit deeper into the real you. Church folk can't handle this mess. But, but, but there's a book that I'm going to give to all my leaders called The Emotional Healthy Leader. Because we want to make sure that we have people that are healthy. Just because I'm saved don't mean I'm not crazy. Just because I speak in tongues, watch this. What good is it for me to speak in tongues and you don't speak to me? No, say good morning to me. And then I wanna I wanna get a book called Becoming. Who God intended. Yeah. Uh, 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 a new picture for your past. A healthy way of managing your emotions. Uh, a fresh perspective of relationship. Okay, listen, y'all. I'm not a visiting preacher. I'm your pastor today. I come to show the house the house. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't come to preach as good as I could. I came this morning to help as much as I could. And, and can I say to all of you, this message is for everyone in this room who has negative pictures. Yeah, was daddy even there? Or did he even care? That's a picture. Have you been through some bad relationships? That's a picture there. Had some people that you gave everything to didn't give much back to you. That, 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 there's some pictures. That, those pictures, watch this, can get printed into our minds and God wants to change the picture. David Eckman says in his book, watch this, he says, all people who don't like to think, y'all, watch this, Y'all just ignore me right quick for a minute, but I'll just need all the thinking people to come here, okay? Because in the book, he says, becoming of who God intended, he said, not only are the Bible and the Bible teachings on emotions misunderstood, but as further result, the impact of specific scripture is not understood. For example, one of the primary points in the story of the woman at the well in John 4, he said, is often missed. He said, Jesus asked a Samaritan woman for a drink of water for which they shared a mutual need. He then told her if she actually knew who it was talking with her and would ask him, he would place a deep spring of water and refreshment within her and that would spring up to eternal life to no one else in the gospel of John did Jesus say such a thing he seemed to be greatly interested in making a difference watch this in her emotional life 
He says, often when people exhibit suspicion in adult life, like why are you asking me some water, suspicion, when their emotions are damaged or non-existence. Jesus says, I will place a spring within you, which means you're empty right now. I'm going to place a spring in you. It is because of great stress in their background. Jesus, sure enough, informed her that she had five husbands and the one she was with now was not her. Christ went on to tell her that her father in heaven wanted to have a spiritual relationship with her so as to reparent her, unquote. That's what he says in that book. See, you be surprised how many people need to be reparented. You'd be surprised how many people older than me and younger than me call me dad or call me pop because they are looking for somebody to kind of reparent them to help them paint a new picture. Part of the reason for coming to church is for God to put a new spring in you, a new picture in you. Okay, I got to go. But what this sermon got to do with us, pastor? I'm glad y'all asked. Y'all a great crowd, by the way. Great class. I love it. How many emotions you think that she was dealing with? Please catch this because I like to, I, I like to read. See, I love history, y'all. I love history. Me and my daughter, uh, Destiny, and she was telling me about she took a quiz in history and stuff. But I told her, yeah, you know, your dad like history. Now, I love history. And even Ebony back there, because she had to help me with this when I went back to get my degree. Because I just, I just wanted, you know, my Bible courses. I didn't care nothing about all this other math and all that. I, I, so she had to help me. But I like history. But, Sister Regina, my worst subject was math. But even though math was not my favorite subject, I do know, Sebastian, that I know what five plus one equals six. I mean, you know, uh, even though math is not my favorite, so I do know five plus one is six. So at least five brothers done something to her. And another one she's with now, he probably ain't right. So, mother, six different men know something about her body. Y'all looking at me crazy. Do me a favor. Lean on the sister. Say, what's your number while you playing? Y'all say, ooh, yeah, what's, your, what's your number while you playing? Let, 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 let's talk about the amount of emotions that she may, come on, listen to me, she may have been dealing with. Let, let, let's name some. What about depression? Is she, think, you think she had some of that? What, what about anger issues? What, what about grief? You, you, you know what you just did? You just looked at me, y'all, as to say that, that why would she pick all those wrong men. But that's antiquated. No, that, that's back. See, today, world, women pick. Women didn't pick back then. Yeah, yeah, you women back then didn't pick. In that society back there, women were not looked at as valuable or worthy. So therefore, watch this. A man selected you. You didn't select. You had to wait to be picked. So five brothers done picked her or died on her or did not want her. So when Jesus said, give me some water, she was already feeling Y'all got it. Y'all got it. So, so stop talking about this girl. Stop looking down at her. Why you think Jesus picked her? He could have picked anybody in that region. Jesus always looked for the most messed up 
person. Jesus always look around for the girl that nobody else looked at. He always looked for the brother that's been through some stuff and rose up on her and said, today I want to have a drink with you. Yeah, your mama didn't want to have a drink with you, but I do. Maybe three of the husbands died. Maybe two just said, I, I don't want you no more because woman, women would get divorced because if a man thought somebody else was cute, he could have just divorced you for no reason. No alimony, no child support. If he wanted somebody else, he could divorce you, no strings attached, and the law back then didn't back you up. So maybe she's dealing with anxiety. Maybe she's dealing with the fact that since all of these men keep leaving me, how am I going to provide for myself? Since women didn't work and wasn't taught to read. See, back then you could end up as a prostitute or a beggar if you didn't have no sons to provide for you or a man to take care of you. So maybe she got depression. Maybe she got anxiety. Maybe she got anger issues. Maybe she got all of this going on. Oh, and that's why at GTV I'm careful who I let stand at that door I'm careful who I let call new folk cause I never know who walked in this church and they already feeling some kind of way yeah, you, 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 you don't know if that brother just caught his woman with another man you don't know if that brother just came through that door, just walked out of prison. You don't know he's been trying to get himself together. You don't know that that girl that just walked through that door is mad enough to kill everybody. You don't know that she want to shoot him, shoot herself, shoot her family. She got stuff on her mind. She's feeling some kind of way. Here's the sermon. Y'all ready for this? Here's the sermon. You cannot always control how you feel. But you can control what you do. That's so good. You cannot always control how you feel. But you can control what you do. Ever, anybody ever woke up some feeling some kind of way? Come on, be honest with you. Now, I don't care if you say sanctified and Kentucky fried. You still be feeling some kind of way. You don't always control, listen to me, how you feel. He didn't ask for it. He didn't want to be attracted to her. He's a good man. He loves Jesus. He loves his family. Family, but all he knows is without asking he's feeling some kind of way he cannot deny how he feels but he can control what he does I'm preaching better than y'all responding because stop letting the devil tell you what you got to do when you are feeling some kind of way. So what, devil? Greater is he that is in me. That oh, I don't care what kind of feeling you got for that married man. You tell him we done, brother. You're single and he's making you feel good. You say I'm in love with you and I shouldn't be, but boo, we are done. You haven't spoke to somebody because they made you almost hate them call them and say I love you and I don't even know if I mean it or not but I'm trying to love you because I'm feeling some kind of way about what you said to me and many of us in this room by our very nature are more pessimistic than optimistic because of home origin issues because of the context where we came from I'm one I'm more pessimistic I have to remind myself Philippians 4 whatever things are lovely because my memories can make me melancholy preach Cole but I think I will because is there, is there anybody honest in here like, that's like me that if you're not careful, you can be having a good day and then go to thinking and the next thing you know, you start feeling some kind of way about what you should have did or what you could have did or didn't 
do now the devil done got you in depression when the devil does that you gotta say the devil is a lie devil you are a liar I choose to walk in the biblical emotions of love peace and joy whatever things are lovely whatever things are pure whatever things of a good report think on these things now do me a favor let's give the devil a nervous breakdown and go to praising God no matter how you feel and I know some of you came to church you're sitting there and you feel in some kind of way why don't you give the devil a breakdown and just praise God no matter how you feel I'm out of time but notice her response her response next verse is speaking of worship if you a prophet, look what he said. Your ancestors worship on this mountain, but you a Jew. And you Jews say the people must worship. What is she talking about? Now let's look at this. Now watch this. Y'all want y'all to look at this. Jesus just told sister girl, told her that five brothers done dogged you or died on you. The brother you with now, something, something, something ain't right with this relationship. And the only thing, Sister Lockwood, she got to say, is that my ancestors worship on this mountain? Okay, here we go. I'm going to help somebody. I'm going to preach next Sunday. Come back next Sunday. This, I got a pastor today. When you're messed up on the inside, you will deflect real conversation and begin to talk mess. Y'all missed that. Because that ain't got nothing to do with what Jesus was talking about. Now he's trying to deal with what's really wrong with you. Oh, well, I am supposed to worship on this mountain. Now what they got to do with you having five husbands? ain't got nothing to do with what Jesus was talking about. She wants to talk theology with the one who is a theologian. She wants to talk a Bible with the one who is the word. Jesus like, girl, you can't handle me with that. Don't try to bring up theology. I'm trying to come down to where you are and tell you that I can fix you, but you baby girl gotta be real. Well, we worship on one mountain, right? She, she just talking. Jesus said, okay, okay, okay. You want to talk about worship. I didn't come to talk about worship. I came to talk about you. But if you want to talk about worship, we can go there. He said, there's coming a time. When the true worshipers, I got to go. God bless y'all, GTV. I see y'all Wednesday. But the true worshipers. Now, y'all didn't shout right there. I said the true worshipers. I bid y'all good evening. I said the true, I'll pick it up Wednesday. The true worshipers. I love me some greater true vine. And I know some people probably say, Pastor Colbert got some people over there that's not all together. They still got some issues. Pastor Colbert still love them when they wrong and he keep letting them come in. Why does he let them come in? Pastor, why do you love us when you know we trifling? Because when even when you're wrong, you still real. Y'all just missed that. I gotta go, y'all. But is there anybody here honestly that made a lot of mistakes in your life but your worship is real? Is there anybody that came to church to say God, there's a lot of stuff I need you to work on but I came here to throw up my hands and say thank you that you let me live in spite of me would you shake five people's hand and say neighbor I got 99 problems
but my worship is real. That was the wrong person. Would you find somebody that you haven't shook their hand and be ready to go home, but shake their hand like you're going to shake it off and say, I've done some stuff that I shouldn't have did. I've been in some places that I shouldn't have been. But when I come to church, I didn't come here to be cute. Even when I mess up, I come here and fess up and say, God, I plead the blood of Jesus over my life. I gotta go, but can I tell y'all why I'm sticking with Jesus? Even when I don't understand them, can I tell you why I can't leave the church? No matter what happens in my life, slap five people and say that cause he's all I got. Yeah, he's all I got. Is there anybody in here that God is the best thing that ever happened to you? Well then shake somebody's hand give him a hug and say even when I'm feeling some kind of way I gotta hold on I gotta hold on to Jesus yeah yeah would you push your neighbor and say neighbor sometimes I be feeling some kind of way but do me a favor do like the old folks say will you shake somebody's hand and say please be patient with me God is not through with me yet but when God gets through with me I gotta go but the Bible says that the woman left her water pots and she went running in the city. Okay, wait a minute, y'all. What did she come for the to the well for? I said, what did she come to the well for? But when God gets hold of you, stuff you used to have to have, you don't need as much. She left the water and went running to the city. And she said, come, come see a man that just told me everything was wrong with me. Good evening, GTV. May the Lord bless you real good. But do me one more favor. I said, do me one more favor. I'm about to license you as an evangelist for 30 seconds and then your license are going to expire. You got 30 seconds to evangelize and then your license is going to expire. Now tell everybody on your road before your license run out and say, come see a man that picked me up turn me around come see a man that got me off crack and brought me back come see a man that helped me with my heredity and fix my integrity come see a man that got me out of bed that I shouldn't be laying in come see a man yeah that heal my body come see a man that fix my family would you hug your neighbor and say neighbor I'm feeling some kind of way but I'm a praise my way out I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to open up your mouth and praise him until you feel better praise him until the chains break praise him until the walls fall I need somebody to walk over to your neighbor and say neighbor take a look at me God did it tell him God did it he picked me up turned me around is there anybody here that will praise the Lord for fixing your heart for fixing your mind for fixing your spirit 
Let everything that have breath take 30 seconds and give a praise. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. Come to work today. Come on, let everything. Come on and praise him. Yes. Yeah. If the Lord has fixed it for you, if the Lord ever did anything for you, open up your mouth. Give him praise. Tell them, thank you. Woo! Tell them, thank you. Come on. If the Lord. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask y'all a question. If you ever... Walk, if you ever walk to the store, raise your hand. If you ever walk to do something wrong, raise your hand. If you ever walk to the bus stop, raise your hand. Now, if you can walk to all those places, if your legs let you, then walk out of your seat and go tell somebody, I'm feeling some kind of way, but I'm going to praise him anyhow. Come on, tell them I'm going to praise him. Come on, say I'm going to praise him. Anyhow. Come on, get out of your feelings. Come on, get out of your feelings. And begin to praise him. Yeah. I feel, I feel God in here. I feel him, I feel him. Mother, I feel him, I feel him. Woo! Come on and pray. Come see a man. Yeah. Now I need all the perfect people to stay where you at, but all the messed up people need to go find somebody and say, come see a man that told me everything that was wrong with me, but he fixed me. He fixed my heart. He fixed my spirit. He restored my soul. Yeah. Now I know what 23rd number of Psalms mean. My mama used to make me memorize the 23rd Psalms. And I really didn't know what it meant. But since I had some kids, since I've been married, since I had some ups and I had some downs, now I know what the 23rd number saw me. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not woe. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He restored my soul. Yeah, 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 so I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Mother, I know that you had some shadows of death laying over you, but you didn't stay there, but you went through 
the valley of the shadow of death and I fear no evil. Why? Because thou rod and thou stand, they comfort me. Now can I, can I tell you something else? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I ain't got to worry. I got somebody that's following me. I got Shirley on the left side. I got goodness on the right side. somebody to just run to this altar throw your hands up and say I be feeling some kind of way but I'm gonna praise him anyhow come on come on praise him anyhow no matter how you feel I said praise him anyhow no matter how you feel Pray, oh, praise him anyhow. Throw those hands up. That's it, that's it. Keep praising, keep praising. Feel worshiper. True worshipers. God is looking for some true worshipers. He said the hour has come and now is. That he's seeking. He's looking. For some true worshipers. Listen, Pastor is not trying to be mean. I know you feel some kind of way sometimes because of life, situations, get caught up in your feelings. But if you don't remember nothing else today, remember. But even when you be feeling some kind of way, praise God anyway. Don't let your feelings stop you from worshiping God. Let him deal with what's really bothering you. That's one of the things that's what's wrong with the church now. One of the reasons why the church have lost its power is because we want to put mascara on everything. And I ain't talking about makeup on your face, but I'm talking about what's really wrong with you. I believe, yeah, I believe in talking positive. Yes, I believe you ain't got to tell everybody what's wrong with you. You can tell them it's fine. But don't let that stop you. Do that so long that you will begin to not even deal with what's really wrong with you. And when you come to church, you come here to be fake. I don't come here to be fake. I come here to be real. I got 99 problems, but one thing is real is my worship. And when I give God my pure worship, chains begin to break. Walls that I done put up for years begin to fall. Listen, I know sometimes you guard your heart. Because you've been broken so many times. You done let people in and they mistreated you or let you down. But let me tell you something. 
If you ever close up your heart, it will always stay cold. But if you ever keep your heart open, it may get broken, but it will stay warm. I don't want a cold heart. I don't want, I don't want every time when I, when I come to church and everybody else be feeling the presence of the Lord and I don't feel nothing. I don't feel what my neighbor feel on my right and my left. I wish I could feel it, but I tell you today, if you would just open up, if you would just begin to open up your heart, let him in. One thing I lo love about God is that he's a gentleman. He won't force it. See, some of you used to people forcing stuff. Let me tell you something. Jesus would not force his way on you. The book of Revelation said, he said, behold, I stand at the door. He said, he's such a gentleman. I won't bust it open. I knock. If anybody open up that door, guess what he said? I'll come in. Now sit down. And I'll sub with you, which means I have a relationship with you. I want a relationship. Listen, come on. I, I feel worship in this place. Come on. I, why don't you just come to this altar? I don't have to lay hands on you. Just come with your hands open. Come on. Just begin to worship. I believe there's an anointing here that will destroy the yoke. Come on. Why don't you come and say, you know what? I just want a man. Come on. Come on, just begin to worship. Come on. Come on, come, 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 come. That's it, come, come, come. Come on. Come on, let's just begin to worship. Let's begin to worship. Come on, come on. I ain't got to lay hands. Let's just come worship. Come on, come on, come. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, begin to worship. Come on. That's it, that's it. Just throw those hands up. Hold those hands up. Come on. Throw those hands up. Come on, that's it. Come on, let's worship. That's it, that's it. It's just you and him. That's you and him. Come on. Raise those hands. Come on, why don't you come? Come on, the altar is open. Come on, the altar is open. Come on, why don't you come? Come, come, come. Come on, come on. I feel it breaking. Come on, I feel the chains breaking. I feel the chains breaking. I feel it, I feel it. Come on, hallelujah. That's it, that's it. Come on, let it fall, let it fall. That's it, come on, wash up, true worshipers. Come on, the Holy Ghost is here. That's it, that's it. Come on, bring it to him. Come on, bring it, bring it, bring it. Come on, bring it. Bring it to him. I feel the power of God is at this altar. Listen, if I be a man of God, and I know I am, I know what I heard, and I know what I heard in the spirit, that while you at this altar, and you just begin to give God your all, the Holy Spirit is refreshing you now. You're not going to leave here the same way you came. But if you would just allow the Holy Spirit to overtake you. Come on. Oh, let him overtake you.
right now. However you feeling, come on, that's the Holy Spirit. Come on, he's tugging at you at your heart. He's at your heart right now. Come on, and he's saying, he's knocking at the door of your heart. Come on, he's knocking at the door of your heart. Come on, let him in. Come on, come on. Just say, open up your mouth and say, come on in, Lord. Come in. I be feeling some kind of way, but come on in. I've been hurt. I've been dissed. I've been dogged. But Lord, come in, come in. Help me. Woo, come on. I feel it. Yes. God, I feel it. Come on. Keep worshiping. Keep worshiping. Come on. The power of God is here. The power of God is here. Come on. Come on. I feel it. The chains are falling. Come on. The chains are falling. What the devil meant for evil, God is turning it for your good. Come on. Begin to worship. Julie, I'm so glad you came. I'm so glad you're here. I was in my office at the church this week. And the Lord put you before me. And I called your mother. I said, oh, your mother, I said, have Julie's to call me. Because the Lord had a word for you. And I'm so glad you did better than just call. You came. And the Lord wanted me to show you something and remind you that he has not forgotten about you, that he's calling you to a higher place. And he told me to remind you with the sickness that you had in your body, he brought you through that. The car wrecks that you've experienced. You was close to death. Julie, you really don't really supposed to be here today. Your mother really should have had another son to grieve for. But God covered you. God has chosen you for such a time as this. And he told me to tell you, you don't need to run no more. You don't need to run. That he's going to Fix everything that's been wrong. Oh, that you would just give him praise right now. That you would just surrender to him right now. Come on, that's it. God said, I love you with an everlasting love. He'll give you peace in your mind, peace that surpasses all understanding. God said, You're still a mighty man of valor. Come on, that's it. Thank you, Jesus. That's it, that's it, that's it. Cry out to him, that's it. Come on, come on, begin to hug somebody. Come on, you begin. I feel the power of God right now. There's a power of love, there's love in this house. Come on, love is getting ready to conquer everything. Come on.
brought me this far. I don't believe he's brought me this far. I don't believe he's brought me this far. I don't believe he brought you 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 this far. I don't believe he brought me this far. I don't care what the devil done said. I don't believe. I just don't believe it. I don't believe. I don't believe. Whose report will you believe? I don't I know what the doctor said. He brought you this far. I, I don't know what the report said. He brought you this but far. I, believe. I don't believe. I believe the he report of the Lord. Oh. I don't believe. Come on, I know he the devil been talking to you. Far. I don't believe. I know other people been talking about. I, I don't, don't believe. believe. He brought me this far. I don't believe he brought you this far. Oh, I God. don't believe Look at this. God he is brought working me his this altar. far. I this. don't believe God is working he his brought altar. me this far. I don't believe Woo. he brought you this far. People don't I even don't want to leave the altar. That's deliverance. He brought you this There's far. I don't believe he brought you There's this far. Here. I don't believe come on, come on. he brought you this far. I don't believe he brought you Everybody this get far. Stretch, stretch, stretch I your don't hand believe he brought you this far. I don't and just believe begin to say, Lord, I fight he you. brought you this far. For I don't every believe prayer. he brought you this come on, say, Lord, far. I thank you. I don't believe for fixing everything that needs to be far. fixed. I don't Come on and say, Lord, thank you, he you for turning around far. everything that I needs to be turned. Believe now give him praise. Don't believe he brought me this far. Don't believe he brought me this far. Said I don't believe he brought you this far. I know you feel good. I don't believe he brought you this far. I don't believe he brought you this far. You don't, don't have a church home. He brought you this far. And you, I don't believe. You like what you feel. He brought you this far. Come on. I don't believe. I would love to be he your He brought pastor. you this far. Come on. I don't believe. Make that decision. Just he say, brought hey, you this far. House, I, I want don't this to be believe. My church. He brought and I want you, you to be this my pastor. Far. The I door is open. Believe. Those of you that watch it online. He brought you this far. One, I don't call believe. that number. Email somebody will get back with you in 24 hours. I don't believe. You haven't had a chance to give. He's brought you this. Give it on the screen. I don't It'll be a blessing. He's Catch us this Wednesday this for Wednesday night in the Word. Life of the Divine Bible study. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Nation and welcome. I'm Lady Savoy Colbert and I just wanted to tell you about some exciting news that we have at GTV. We have family and friends coming up on Saturday, September 17th at 4 p.m. It's our annual fellowship where we gather our family and our friends. We want you to come to 530 Reunion, DeSoto, Texas on September 17th at 4 p.m. Our guest pastor, our guest speaker will be Pastor Bertrand Bailey and if you've not heard him before, you're in for a treat. If you have heard him before, you know what it is. We're asking our family, we're asking our friends, come on and fellowship with the GTV Church. We're looking to see you soon.